In this video, we're going to go through an example where we use the definition of curl uh, to calculate the value of the curl of a particular vector field given just by the unit vector in the theta hat direction, so in cylindrical polar coordinates. This vector field looks something like this, where all the vectors have uh, the same length. And it just uh, goes around the circle according to the direction of the theta hat vector. Once we've calculated the curl in this way, we're going to verify that the algorithm that we came up in a previous video, where we can calculate the curl uh, using uh, the cross product of the del operator with your vector field, matches our result from this one. And this is just to show you that uh, the way we derive this isn't limited to Cartesian coordinates or to a cube. This is true regardless of the shape of the uh, or geometry that you take. So we first need to define a small area element, delta s, in such a way that uh, we can use the same approximations that we used in uh, the previous video where we showed this result. So we're going to take an area element over here. This is going to be our delta S over which we calculate this line integral. And we're going to go in the counterclockwise direction as usual. And the dimensions of this length are, we'll call it delta R since we're in polar coordinates. And the angle subtending both of these arcs, we're going to denote by delta theta. Okay, the distance from the origin to this point over here, this we're going to denote by R. All right, so we wanna calculate the circulation per unit area of this vector field. And as before, we're going to break it down into four distinct paths. So we'll call this path over here, gamma one, this path on the side, gamma two, the path up here, gamma three, and the path over here, gamma four on the side over here. So that the closed loop line integral across this is the sum of the line integral along each one of these paths. Now, because our vector field is in the theta hat direction, we know right away that the dot product of a vector field with the displacement for paths two and four, which are in the r hat direction, has to be equal to zero. This is just because r hat is orthogonal or perpendicular with theta hat. So this means right away that the integral along path two is equal to the integral along path four, which is equal to zero. So what we're left with then is the integral along path one Uh, 
uh, v dot dr. Here dr is a general displacement vector. Okay, don't confuse this r with the r in polar coordinates. They're different in this case. Plus the integral along path three. All right. And just as we did before, we're going to consider that these paths are so small that a vector field V essentially doesn't change uh, along those paths. So we can take them out of our integral. This is gamma one and gamma three. Now, for gamma one, we can substitute dr by the arc length of path one. And we're going in this direction, so in the negative theta hat direction. Okay, so this is the same thing as dr. And then likewise for the third path, we want the arc length of this path over here. And we're going in the direction of positive theta hat now. And again, this is just dr, which in the module of line integrals we had said was ds in the direction along uh, the path, which we have called t hat. Okay, this is ds t hat. When you take the dot product of our vector field, which was just theta hat, which with each one of these vectors, you're left with minus the arc length of path one, plus the arc length of path three. Okay, and this one comes from V being equal to theta hat. So V, v dot minus theta hat is just minus one. And this one comes from V dot it with theta hat plus theta hat being equal to one. Okay, so all we need to do now is calculate the arc length of each one of these paths and we can do this geometrically. We know that the distance from here to here is r and the angle subtended is delta theta. So for path one, the arc length is r delta theta. And for path two, now the radius is r plus delta r and the angle subtended continues to be delta theta. So this is r plus delta r times delta theta. And what we're left with then is delta r delta theta is the circulation of this particular vector field. Now, if we go back to our definition of the curl, now we need to find the area of our small element. So the area over here. And once again, we can do it geometrically as we did when we, uh, when we went through polar coordinates, finding the area element in polar coordinates. So, let me separate this. Let's 
So we want R delta theta is the length of this side over here. And we're going to multiply by the length of this side over here, which is delta R. So this is the area of a small loop that we took. And then finally, in our definition, we need the normal vector to the surface, which since we're in the xy plane, the normal vector is in the k hat direction. So we're left with k hat dot curl dot v is equal to one over delta s times the circulation of our vector. Okay, so I've just rewritten it over here to be more clear. So this was our definition of curl as the area tends to zero. We can substitute in the value of delta s of our small loop element and substitute in the value of the circulation, which was the closed loop line integral along some path. And the important thing to remember here is this delta s has to be small. You can't calculate the loop integral around the entire closed circle because that's not considered to be infinitesimally small anymore. So this cancels out with this, and this cancels out with that, and we're just left with one over R. So through the definition of the curl, we found that this is equal to one over R in the, uh, sorry, in the K hat component, in the K hat direction. In the, so it only has a set component. Now we can check with our more convenient way of calculating this quantity, which is this. In uh, cylindrical coordinates, this is given by the following. And these expressions you'll have access to, you would have access to in, uh, in an exam. So the R hat component is the curl of that is given by this. In the theta hat component, uh, the curl is given by that. And because the Z direction in cylindrical coordinates is the same as Cartesian and the K hat direction, the curl component is given by this. So since our vector field was just equal to the unit theta vector, it only has a theta component and it doesn't depend on anything. So all of these terms are zero all of these terms are zero. There's no R component, so this term is zero. And we're just left with this one. Which is that. And when you simplify, you recover the result that we got before. And this is how you would uh,
derive this algorithm in different coordinate systems by following a similar pattern as this. All right. So that was it for this example. In the next video, we'll introduce a more general result known as Stokes theorem that can uh, simplify certain calculations by giving the choice between calculating a surface integral or a closed loop line integral.